Do you want Instagrammers or TikTokers to post about your brand? Or do you actually want to engage creators who influence their audience to buy your product? If you're in the latter of those two, you've come to the right place. Welcome to Winfluence, the Influence Marketing Podcast. Hello again, friends. Thanks for tuning in to Winfluence, the Influence Marketing Podcast. If you're seeing this on YouTube, LinkedIn, or elsewhere, you already know what I'm about to tell the podcast subscribers. Winfluence is now available as a video show. If you'd like to see the magic as well as hear it, I do have a handsome beard. Uh, just pop over to the YouTube channel and subscribe. The easy way to get there is jasonfalls.co slash YouTube. Of course, you can also search for Jason Falls Winfluence or just Winfluence on YouTube and find it as well. The video episodes will be offered up on YouTube, LinkedIn, and Twitter each Monday. We're going to shift the publishing of the show to 11 a.m. Eastern time so folks can join us for lunch, brunch, or breakfast, and well, I guess probably dinner too if we've got some European viewers and listeners. If you'd like to do that on the stream, the audio podcast will still be there for you. You know, it'll publish and fire a couple of hours later than it normally fires just to coincide with the videos going live as well. I guess you can say web video killed the audio podcast star. If only the Buggles would issue a remake of their one hit wonder to apply to 2023, right? Regardless of where you're listening or watching, thank you for being here and following along our journey to understanding more about influence and influence marketing. Now on to today's show. There's a lurking problem in the influence marketing space today. I've noticed it and mentioned it a few times here on the show. A few others are starting to see it too. The problem is not with the mechanisms, the softwares, or logistics of influence marketing. Brands engage creators they probably find via software. There's an exchange of value. The influencer is compensated somehow and the brand gets exposure or content or both. All of that is well and good, but all of that is becoming a commodity of sorts. The problem is the thinking behind most influence marketing efforts today is, well, meh. A brand says, here's product and money. Tell your fans to try it. The creator puts on their best happy face and gushes about said product and cashes their check. And the audience sometimes buys it, sometimes not, the product or the pitch. The failure is why I originally launched a consulting firm. I wanted to focus on the strategy and creative concepting that was so blatantly missing from the industry, in my opinion. It's also a part of why I pivoted to join Scipio.ai because we go at influence from a different perspective. Plus, I can still bring that strategic thinking and concepting to the table for our customers. But I'm not the only one who sees the gaps. Noah Eisman is a similar thinker in the space. He is the partnerships lead at Lomanu, a software company that's building infrastructure pieces for the creator economy. They've been working on some innovations in approach to payments I find pretty interesting. But Noah also thinks there are shortcomings and shortfalls in how brands engage with creators, creators engage with brands, and the folks in the middle like agencies and software companies are playing. I invited him to the show today to fill those gaps with me. We also touch on what Lumanu is up to. Good conversation about what needs to get better in the influence marketing space is coming up on the show. This episode of Influence is presented by Scipio.ai, the community commerce marketing platform. It has a family of apps that helps you drive commerce through your own community. One of those apps is focused on helping creators and brands be more efficient with their time. And in today's economy, we know efficiency is important. Whether you're a brand or content creator, you probably spend a lot of time writing and rewriting captions for social media content, but you also have to make sure that content will perform well by keeping up with the trends across social media, previous post performance, and so on, right? Well, Scipio's generative AI content app is called Community Generative AI, or CGI for short. Think of it as an AI content generator with an extra brain for optimizing social media posts and predicting success. All you do with CGI on Scipio is tell it the idea of your post or even campaign, give it a call to action, the tone of voice you prefer, and the length of the word count. With the push of a button, you have a library of smart content recommendations with predictive analysis of how that post will perform. Scipio's powerful AI engine digs into the big data of over 140 million social media users, 
posts and images and videos. It mines that data for deep learning insights to give you not just content, but content that will perform. That makes it very different from other AI content generators out there. Now, if you know me well, you know I'm not a fan of automating content creation, but that's not the point. CGI produces a ton of great content for you to save writing time. You still need to review and edit, make sure it's perfect, but it gets you 90% of the way there, which saves you time. Scipio.ai wants to give you that power with a two-week free trial. I'll give a link in just a second to sign up. There's no credit card required. Go to jasonfalls.co slash CGI and start creating all the captions and content you want with the click of a button. Free for two weeks. Just see if you like it. I'm betting you will. jasonfalls.co slash CGI. Seriously, folks, this will change the game if you write a lot or have a lot of clients you need to write social captions for. jasonfalls.co slash CGI. What's missing in the influence marketing space today from agencies, software companies, brands, and creators? Noah Eisman from Lumanu will discuss next on Winfluence. Noah, let's level set here first. I want to talk about Lomanu, but for those out there who don't know your background, give us the how, why and how. Why are you in the influence marketing space and how the hell did you get here? Yeah, that's a good question. So I, I've been in marketing my entire career. I started off in the agency world initially, but when I was there, I saw the inefficiencies that were happening with creative production and how millions of dollars were only going to producing a few assets. And I thought, there's got to be a more interesting way in a modern world. And so it led me down the rabbit hole of the creator economy and how technology and creators combined can produce the scale of content that marketers need now. And so it's led me down a number of different companies, but that's generally the why I'm here and in the space. Now, I know you spent a little bit of time with one of our friends of the show here at Tagger. You were there for a bit. Your role there, I think, was similar to your role now, right? Helping kind of socialize Tagger to agencies and other partners. Is that right? Yeah. The only difference now with what I'm doing with Umano is that I can include the platforms themselves as some of the potential partners that I can work with them. But yeah, it's very similar. Very nice. All right. So let's talk a little bit about Lamanu. We we talked about the company a year or so ago when Kelly Alexa, who spent some time there, was on the show. But that was before I think Lamanu's relatively recent pivot to focusing on payments. You guys started out, I think, focusing on whitelisting, which Struck me at the time to be a little bit of a narrow thing to focus on. Give us the elevator pitch. What exactly is Lumanu focused on now and how are you guys helping improve the industry? Yeah, well, being relatively new to Lumanu, I can say I primarily knew them also just as a whitelisting company. But when I got introduced to Tony and Paul, who are the co-founders of Lumanu, they walked me through kind of their pivot. And to your point of it being a narrow focus, they really also kind of saw the writing on the wall that long-term, that wasn't a viable business to build long-term with the constant changes that are happening in the industry. And so they really went back to the tables and surveyed their current partners, the creators they worked with, and everyone kept citing payments as a core issue that they were facing all in their own unique way. And so Lumano kind of took a holistic view at what everyone was going through and said, I think we can build a better mousetrap, essentially, if you will, that would be better than the PayPal's or Stripe's or Topalty's or Bill.com. And then the unique ways that finance teams are trying to jam those into their current processes when they're trying to pay out lots of creators all at once. Lumanu said, I think we can build a better process and a better way to help everyone involved get money to where it needs to go. So that's been the pivot. And they've been working on that now for about the last 18 months. So um, just so people can sort of you follow along with an example. When I was at Cornet in the agency world and we would, you know, use multiple influencers for a given campaign, the conflict here, and correct me if I'm wrong, Noah, this is the conflict I think you're at least solving for agencies and brands. Let's say you've got 25 creators you want to pay. Well, the CFO and the accounting team, they want an invoice and they want W-2 and they want all this paperwork before the creator can even be paid. And they don't necessarily want to pay via Venmo or PayPal or some of the other places. They want to send a check. 
but the creators are like, Hey, I've already done the work. It's the payments due within 15, 30 days. You need to pay me quickly. And this is 2023. What the hell are you doing? Sending me a check 60 days later. And so there's that conflict of the content creators are used to being in the real world in 2023 dropped, you know, money on PayPal and Venmo. Whereas the businesses and brands are still in the sort of, you know, maybe you could say antiquated, but the bureaucratic way of running a business where you've got accounts payable, accounts receivable, all that kind of stuff. Is that generally the problems you're solving for businesses and brands and creators trying to figure out where those two or three parties need to come together to make things work? Yeah, absolutely. I think that was a great example articulation to, to say it back and in a different way, because that's been what I've been practicing and thinking on a lot as I've been in my first few months here is everyone kind of thinks through the lens of time saving, cost saving, and can I do something faster? So to kind of put what Lumanu does through that lens on the time saving end, to your first point, there's a huge communication pain point between a marketing team and a finance team when a marketer wants to mark that a creator did their work and simply just get that done and off their plate and just finish up the campaign when finance makes them jump through hoops. Oh, this creator <laughs> didn't get all their forms in. We don't, their payment system or their information's wrong. What have you, can you track that down? Huge communication pain points there. So Lumanu solves all that by being the one that handles the collection of all of that, the paperwork, et cetera. There's also easier automation on that point where a marketer needs to say to a finance person, hey, this is done. Usually that's done in a spreadsheet, then sent via email. It has to be uploaded then into a payment system. All that can be automated with Lumanu as well. So lots of time saving there. Also then Lumanu can handle tax compliance. So just like PayPal will issue a 1099 when you go over $600 now on your limit. Lumani will take care of all that too. So huge time savings on a finance team's end on that front. And then just like I said, collecting all that info. So then on the cost savings piece of it too, because of the time saving, less overhead costs needed, you have a better payout per cost payout. Lumani is really competitive on that rate with what else is out there. So you're saving money on the actual transaction. And then there's really cool partnership opportunities that Lumano explores with their partners that allows for all sorts of rev sharing if applicable. So really cool ways that Lumano is trying to just to shake things up from the status quo of the options that are currently out there. So, and again, just to kind of, you know, add on to make sure that people understand the conflict here, payments to freelancers and creative talent, maybe influencers. I can see where if you're using an influence marketing platform, paying creators there, then you're also bringing freelancers through maybe Airtable or some other management solution. Then you're having people send invoices to accounting for direct deposits. Somebody else is asking for PayPal. That's just a crazy, complicated thing. So I can definitely see why an agency out there or even a brand would say, yeah, I need that. For a unified payment system to work, though, don't you have to get everybody on one page? I mean, it seems like that is just a herd and cats problem. Well, that's the piece that when I said it, think of it like PayPal, I would say that's the easiest way when you're like everyone pretty much has a PayPal account. And once you're on there, you can receive payments from anyone everywhere. So, yes, you have to initially onboard someone or someone has to onboard themselves onto Lumanu on both sides, both the brand side and the creator side. But once you're on, the more people that use Lumanu, once you're in the system, your information's uploaded. You never have to do that again if you're using Lumanu to facilitate that transaction. So if they can gain traction again, they've made this pivot recently. They're building a lot of great momentum in the space. And a lot of people are really seeing the value of what they're offering. It's slowly building momentum. And that's the long-term goal. So that's what I'm here to do is try and help make that happen. Very nice. We're talking to Noah Eisman from Lumanu. When we come back after the break, he and I are going to roll up our sleeves a bit and talk about what's not firing on all cylinders in the influence marketing space. And perhaps we can do things to make all the influencer marketing campaigns better for everybody out there. So don't go away. <laughs> Back on Winfluence with Noah Eisman from Lumanu. Okay, Noah, let's get down to brass tacks on what's wrong with the influencer marketing space right now. When I began building out what was to become a consulting firm, the gap I was trying to fill was I felt like influencer marketing had become predictable, stale, sponsored content plays left and right. Most programs were pay for post. 
there was really little authenticity at play. Very few creators are taking the content to a level I'd call creative. As a result, doubt the effectiveness of influencer marketing overall. My take on it was we needed better strategy and more importantly, better creative concepts to fuel good campaigns and partnerships. Is that what you've been feeling about the influence world the last year or two? Yes. I don't know if I would say something that's wrong though out there. I would say like the larger idea is that people have overcomplicated influencer marketing, but it is complicated. So it deserves the overcomplication. But at the same time, when I say it's overcomplicated and before I joined Lumanu, I, for the past year plus was running my own consultancy. And so said this all the time to my own clients, when you're doing influencer marketing, you're really only ever doing one of four things. You're generating content, you're generating awareness. You might also be able to generate sales or an act call to action. And then inevitably you're building community and you can do all those things simultaneously. But what I've generally found is that people conflate what strategies they're trying to do at once. So someone says they want to do sales, but really they end up doing an awareness campaign. And so I think that is kind of the crux of it where I've seen that play out over and over again, both with the clients I've consulted when I was at Tagger, watching people use the platform to try and get to their end results, right? So that's the complicated part is once you can have that clarity, can you still even execute it correctly? But most of the time I see people even just misalign on their initial objectives coming out of the gate. And that can, I think, impact everything you just said. In respect to the creativity piece of it and the strategy piece of it, which are part of the conversation, I kind of blame the agencies, the managed services, and to a degree, the, the SaaS solutions for a lot of the problem. They all want these projects to be scalable and programmatic. They want them to be as turnkey as possible. And that takes the creativity out of it. If all your campaign briefs dictate the content has to be uniform and check all these boxes, there's less room for someone to say, hey, let's blow this up with a cool idea. Now, I know you think there's a gap between the software providers and what they can enable via a feature set and the fact that most marketers, brand or agency side, don't know how to use the feature set that may provide that true potential, right? Explain that gap that you see in the software to agency and brand side for us. Well, on the software end, I think everyone's going ahead and creating amazing features and tools. I think there's been over the last couple of years, really awesome segmentation and platforms trying to help SMB brands more than enterprise and certain platforms going more enterprise focused. It still comes down to the marketer though, who is inevitably given that tool and how do they learn it? How do they know how to apply it? What do they know they're capable of achieving in it? And again, how are they defining their objectives initially anyway? I think those are all the things and it kind of now it sounds like I'm beating a dead horse, but I really think that's the simplest way to keep like stripping it down. And, you know, I think when you bring it even to the agency level, especially on the idea of wanting influencer marketing just to be programmatic, I do think that is also the future state of what influencer can be. That's what got me really interested all the way back in that aha moment when I was back in the agency world of, the creators with technology could ultimately solve programmatically what media buying has already been able to achieve with creative, but we're not there yet. And I think that's what is the frustrating part for a lot of people is that we're trying to get there. People are trying to do it in the immediate, but there's still that technology gap. I think if anything, that's the real piece that's missing. But in terms of what's immediately available, the technology platforms are doing a great job, but we're starting to see now with what the social platforms that they get their data from are deciding to do and how they share that data. That's also a real curveball that's being thrown to the general market right now. Yeah. I think the, the changes in some API calls and whatnot, I think it was for Instagram not too long ago, kind of crippled Grin, one of the larger influencer marketing platforms out there, because I guess their API access wasn't quite at the level it needed to be to avoid that. And so, again, we're at the bequest and at the folly of these social networking platforms and what data they allow us to see and what they don't. So that certainly has something to do with all the problems out there. I love that you say that one big mistake marketers make with SaaS solutions is they don't know what their objectives are before they pick the platform. Like they go out and they find the software And then they figure out how they're going to approach and what goals they want to map out for themselves. I'm going to ask this. It's going to sound like I'm stupid, but it's kind of a trick question. Why is that important? Aren't the influencer marketing platforms out there generally the same? Yes and no. I would say like pre-COVID that it was a resounding yes. 
maybe pre-COVID is the wrong way to say it. it's like pre-segmentation and, and platforms choosing strategically to serve certain parts of the market. In the first wave of this, I would call it like 2016 to 2019, everyone was trying to build a better version of the same platform. And then I think there was a moment where a lot of people said, okay, I'm going to try and go in certain routes. That was a huge part of when I was working on my consultancy and helping brands and agencies in particular. That was one of the main messages I was communicating to them was based on what you tell me to that list that I mentioned earlier, the things you can achieve when you're doing influencer marketing, I'll recommend to you which platforms you should prioritize, or you're going to tell me things that might even say you're not even set up to bring a SaaS platform in-house, you don't even have the manpower or strategy internally to execute with it, you're better served going and trying to spend that with an agency that might be able to get you there. Here are the best to consider. So that would be my answer to your question. You're right. I mean, there's a lot of people out there who think software is the solution. Software is the mechanism. It's not the solution. The solution is you as a brand deciding what you're going to use that mechanism for and how you're going to use it and what goals you're trying to achieve. So it's, I guess I liken it to, you can you can have the world's greatest hammer, but if you don't pick it up yourself and aim it at a nail, it doesn't do any damn good, right? You've yeah. got to figure out what you're using that hammer for. And I think that's where well, a lot of people kind of drop the ball. Yeah, to add to that, I mean, you threw out uh, Grin's name, so I'll throw them a slight praise. You know, in that idea of segmentation, they really led that in saying, we're going to go after SMB, we're going to make the Shopify integration the core part of that platform. And we're going to make it the best for any D2C brand built on Shopify, the best option to funnel your campaign through. They had significant other flaws that other platforms, I think, could stake a better claim to having better features around. Yeah. But they were able to have a tremendous amount of success building up a huge client base with that positioning. And so that kind of goes to your point as well. Yeah. And by the way, that was a trick question. I went to Scipio because they weren't the same. They weren't more of the same for anybody else. The angle there is going after mapping your brand community and going after the influencers that you already know, as opposed to going out and finding different ones. So there's different things out there. That's why I asked that question that way for the listeners to edification. So how can we educate marketers to better understand that they need to get their goals and objectives aligned. They need to get a strategy together before they worry about the software. And we need them to understand the full potential of the software they ultimately choose. And I guess a follow-up question to that is whose responsibility is it to do all this educating? Yeah, well, it's a big question, right? Because I think the hardest part is when whoever it is, whether it's an intern, a director, a mid-level marketer, a CEO tasked with going out and figuring out how am I going to build my influencer marketing offering or campaign engine or whatever it is, when they start to Google it, they get inundated with a million companies all saying they do exactly the same thing with exactly the same language. So you can kind of check that off as like a option. You'll learn a lot and you'll request the demos and you'll spend weeks having 30 minute to an hour conversations really quickly getting run through platforms where by the end of it, you'll be so confused by what you saw. You can't recall who is who and which features belong to which. Yeah. And so then you'll go and read the blog post and there's not a lot of literature out there that really explains it because it's still such a new industry. The answer that I'm trying to get or what I'm trying to paint is actually that's the real difficult part. So I think it's finding the few knowledgeable industry leaders that are out there talking about it and just remembering that people are human and that you can reach out to them and they'll most likely respond because that's their livelihood. They love talking about it anyway. So they'll be really happy to share their knowledge with you most likely. That would be my recommendation to anyone who's listening out there that's really thinking about what's the best way to approach it. Well, and I will humbly submit that I will do my part as someone who thinks about this and studies all this stuff all the time that if people want to reach out to me, great. And I'm assuming, Noah, that you're going to do your part too. So as you do that, and as people want to connect with you, where can they people find you on the interwebs? You can find me on LinkedIn, usually, right? All the time, probably. But uh, <laughs> you can find Lumanu at lumanu.com, spelled kind of how it sounds, L-U-M-A-N-U. -U. And yeah, that's where we're at. That's awesome. Noah, thank you so much for being here, man. I love going back and forth with you. Great having you on uh, the show. Appreciate the time, as always. I always like talking to Noah, he's a super smart guy and a like-minded thinker about all this. Be sure to connect with him on LinkedIn and check out Lamanu as well. 
especially if you're looking for help with those payment tasks and technologies. They are at lamanu.com. Those links will be in our show notes. This episode will be filed under jasonfalls.co slash Noah Eisman. And that's my format for these things. And Noah's last name, by the way, is E-I-S-E-M-A-N-N. So jasonfalls.co slash Noah Eisman, or you can always go to jasonfalls.com, click on the articles up there in the navigation thing and find the episode on that page. Also, don't forget to completely change the way you produce social media content for the better. Get the community generative AI app from Scipio.ai. Two-week free trial, no credit card required. That awaits you at jasonfalls.co slash CGI. If you enjoy Winfluence, help us grow and tell someone about the show. You probably know someone who might want to know more about influence marketing. Send them to winfluencepod.com or share a link to this episode on your social network of choice. If you have a moment, drop Winfluence a rating or review on your favorite podcast app. We're on all of them. The show is now on video as well. Just look for Jason Falls Winfluence on YouTube and see the show as well as hear it. Winfluence is a production of Falls and Partners and presented by Scipio.ai. The technical production is by MPN Studios. Winfluence airs along MPN, the marketing podcast network. Thanks for listening, folks. We'll talk again soon on Winfluence.